I give you a little bit of background. The Placer Business Resource Center, we've been open for about three years now. What we do is we specialize in helping entrepreneurs, small businesses, large businesses, anything from just like this course is, I have an idea, what do we do? To building your business plan, finances, marketing, anything that you could possibly need for your business, we can help you with that. And we do that through all of our partners. So we have the CRS Small Business Development Center. <clears throat> we have um, EDD, IRS, quite a few others that we partner with to bring all these programs and offerings. to. So part of our offerings, we do business workshops just like this one. This is our six week uh, course that we've had. Typically our business workshops now on Zoom are usually around an hour and a half to two hours. Typically when we're in person, they're usually about three hours. Um, we also offer free one-on-one -on -one advising and that's with our small business development center. So they will walk you through every step of your business and pretty much hold your hand through the, through the entire thing so that you know that the information that you're getting and the resources and the help and assistance you're getting, you're not alone. And honestly, you don't know what you don't know. And that's our job. That's the job of the advisors is to help you through all that. That's part of what we're going to be doing throughout these six weeks. The next is uh, permit assistance. So if you ever have to go to the city or county, it's a daunting task for anybody. And we want to make sure that you are 100% prepared for whatever it is that they have to tell you. So if you're coming in and saying, hey, I want to open up a donut shop and I have to go to Placer County, but I don't know what they're going to tell me. So instead of you walking in blindly and them telling you, yeah, you could open your business, but oh, by the way, you owe us $10,000 in fees. You're going to know about everything before that. So all of that information, that timeline, your cost, everything is built into your business plan and into your financials. And the next program that we offer, or next offering, is we partner with the Business Advantage Network. They are a program of our Health and Human Services Department, and they offer job or hiring assistance. And what that is, is we hold free hiring events. It's all virtual now, um, but free hiring events for your business. We also have a program that's called Help to Hire, which utilizes CalWORKs uh, folks that gives up to $10,500 credit towards that employee. So that's $10,500 that you don't have to pay out of pocket. Okay. And that's for a part-time employee. So now that you know kind of a little bit about what the Business Resource Center does, I'm going to go into some housekeeping items. Um, please make sure if you are not speaking that your microphone is muted. And then we will be taking roll call as the class goes on. Not necessarily, we're not going to be calling out any names, but we want to make sure that everybody who registered is here. And if you could help us by renaming your Zoom to make sure that you have a first and a last name with exactly how you registered for the SBDC class. And I'm going to take you through real quick on how to do that. So if you hover over your box with your, with your picture or your name on it, you're going to see three little dots on the right hand corner. If you click that, you'll see an option that says rename. And if you click on rename, you can go ahead and change your name to what you registered with. And that will help us out as we go through and uh, make sure everybody see who's here. Also, if you have a question, this is a very interactive course. If you have a question, ask. We do ask um, with the amount of people that are in class currently, we ask that you put your question in the chat. Don't be afraid to overwhelm us. We have plenty of people here to go through and answer whatever questions we can. If we don't get to your, um, your question, we will follow up with you. This is being recorded. So for some reason, if you are here and you have to leave a little bit early, 
you can go ahead and email us and or email me and I'll put my contact information in the chat and um, let me know send you a link. Um, let's see, we have a, a question. I just saw somebody had their hand raised and I don't know where that went. If you have a question, you go yes, ahead uh, and Tanisha, unmute your Tanisha mic. Has her hand. Go ahead and unmute your microphone if you have a question and go ahead and ask away. I put a question in the chat, but I was just asking, um, do you consider like a small business like an LLC too, or is it just like sole proprietors that you help? Nope, LLC, anything and everything. If you have a business, we can help you. Just because you're an LLC doesn't necessarily mean that you're a large business or a small business. The Small Business Development Center, believe it or not, or the, not small business, the Small Business Administration, so SBA, classifies a small business as anything um, with 500 employees or less. Oh. So, yes. So if you have, you know, 50 employees, you're still a small business. If you have 200 employees, you're still a small business, small or large, we're still going to help you. And all of our services, I just wanted to mention everything that I mentioned, the class, the one-on-one, -on -one, everything is free. We don't charge you a dime. Do you have to be a Placer County resident? You do not. You do can't beat that, right? Great. Right, right, right. <laughs> and, and just uh, thank you, um, Nicole. So um, just to get your bearing a little bit, Nicole is with the Placer. Well, why don't you say, why don't you give yeah, a little So thank you. I forgot to actually introduce myself. I introduced the program and I was so excited about the six week course. I didn't introduce myself. My name is, it's Nicole Hinkle. And I am the program manager for the Placer Business Resource Center. So in coordination with Robert, we organized and the SBDC, we organized this event for you folks. So please, again, don't hesitate to reach out to us if you have questions. If you go through this course and say it's not the right course for you, you can't dedicate two days a week for six weeks, that's fine reach out to me. This program may not be for, this course may not be for you, but we have other offerings that are. So I do want to stress that this course is a six week course. It's Tuesdays and Thursdays from six to seven 30. Your attendance is required at each course. And it's imperative because that way we can give you the help that you need and really get that launch or that business launched at the end of this course that's our goal so if if you you know need additional help reach out to us we'll connect you with an advisor if we can't help you our whole goal is to make sure that you are and everything that we can do and anything that we can do to help you do that is our goal so with that um, i'm going to ask real quick are there any questions please feel free to pop into the chat, or you can also do a raise hand function. I do see one question where is how often are, are these classes offered? Uh, just do the overwhelming um, response for this class. We're getting gearing one up for uh, spring, but we don't have a date yet, but uh, gauging by the interest, they're gonna be fairly regular. Um, I can't find the rename. The rename on, I don't know if it's different on the iPhone, then. Yeah, you know, don't, don't worry about it. Just just type your name in the chat and we'll okay. associate your iPhone name. And that. Great, thank you, okay. Yeah, <laughs> let's not, we, we shouldn't get hung too hung up on technology, but uh, this, you know, the more smooth this stuff runs, the better we can serve you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, okay, there's a couple hands, uh, Samuel William. Hi, yes, this is Samuel Williams. Thank you. I was just uh, tapping in for the person who has the iPhone that had the same issue. Tell if she clicks the participants button, she'll be able to change her name. Okay. Oh, great. Okay. Thank you. Thank no you. problem. <laughs> um, okay, well, in the spirit of uh, this class and the kind of the overall attitude that uh, we'd like to um, 
think everyone has <laughs> in this course is um, we're going to get to work. Um, I, I want to say that I'm Robert Trent. I'm the facilitator for this course. I've been doing these types of things uh, for well over a decade. I've helped a lot of different businesses launch and grow. Um, and part of um, my success is uh, really listening to uh, each and every one of you and understanding the struggle that um, you're going through and about to embark on. Um, it's, it's, um, it takes a special type of person and a lot of dedication. Um, and uh, there's a lot of fear to overcome and I understand that. And um, so I'd like to create an environment in this class where there's a, a certain level of vulnerability and acceptance within our virtual container here, where um, you can ask questions, reach out for help. Um, and really what we want to do is help you achieve your goals. Right? And how we're doing that is like Nicole said, there's one-to-one -one business consulting available to you for free. There's financial advice. There's, of course, this six-week course. Uh, there's all of us collectively together, and I hope that we can have each other's back in this. Um, maybe just for example, I've seen some magic happen where it's like, hey, like, photographer, I'll come to your store and take product photos. Awesome. Well, I'm a writer. I'll help you write your web copy. You know, this is right here. This is a great group because it's really hard to do this uh, on your own. There's a lot of moving parts. And I'm sure each and every one of you are awesome at certain things. And like me, like I, I suck at some things. And those things that I suck at, I ask for help. Uh, you know, and, and I think it's important for me to say like, yeah, I'm not good at this. I better not do this. Or, you know, this is going to take me 10 hours. I don't have 10 hours. I'm going to pay someone 50 bucks to do it in an hour, but he knows how to do it because I don't have time to waste. You know, so there's a lot of resources. We're really throwing it like everything at you. And in return, what we ask is that you give it your all. This class is not designed for a casual, um, hey, maybe I'll pick up a couple gems of information and maybe, you know, wouldn't that be neat if I, um, you know, sat in on a couple sessions. Like, we'd like to think that you're here and you signed up for this course because you're going to start your business by the end of this course. Like, it takes a lot of work. And when we're all pushing like that together, then the success rate goes way up. And I, I understand, I can tell through the Zoom, like some of you are still at work. You have day jobs. There's a lot of pressure going on right now to just make it through. And um, you know, starting a business is like, you gotta turn the volume up even more. And that's a challenge. That's a challenge. And so well, we're, you know, we recognize that and we're trying to support you through that, um, you know, people have bad days, people have great days, but so that's, that's, um, that's where we're at. Are, are you in? Y'all in? Yeah, good, thumbs up. Yes. Right on, right on, right, cool. So I wanna clarify something when <clears throat> the promises, I always like to um, deliver on the promise. And in your business, when you say, um, pizza delivered to your door uh, in 30 minutes or it's free, like you better deliver on that promise. Whatever your business is that you're, you're promising, it's important to deliver. And I want to make sure that we deliver. I think there's an open mic somewhere. Um, uh, I want to make sure that we deliver on the promise. Uh, Val, if you could um, mute yourself, that'd be great. Um, 
And so what, what do, to, to define what is being in business? Let's say you're, 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 it's just an idea right now. It's an idea you know that you're gonna fulfill, but what is being in business? It doesn't, uh, someone earlier said that they wanna do a sushi. Well, you can't possibly have all of the restaurant licenses in the storefront and open up a sushi restaurant in the middle of COVID. That's not realistic. But it may be realistic to make first sale. Uh, on the newscast today, I was like, um, oh, well, let's say you're a knitter and that's your hobby and uh, you've been knitting and you don't know what to do with your scarves you've knitted. Well, you can make an Etsy store. You can easily, not easily, but you could definitely make an Etsy store between now and February 18th or whenever the class ends and have a presence and start selling your scarves. To me, that's in business. You are doing it. If you're a singer and you get paid for a gig, you're a professional singer. You're a professional musician. You know, uh, if you're a hobby actor and you do a play and people are paying for admission, in my mind, you're a professional actor. Is that you know you're not a Broadway actor, obviously, you know, <laughs> but you're you're on that path, and there are certain milestones that you will cross that will let you know that you're making progress and that you're on that path and you're going in the right direction. And so it's gonna take a lot of work. It's gonna take persistence and it's gonna take reaching out for the help that's available to you. Now, during this course, I'm going to make suggestions and some strong suggestions sometimes and um, you know, you're in control of your own destiny and you're like, well, I'm like, Robert said, I have to do that, but I tried that before and that doesn't work. I'm gonna try something else. Well, you know, who am I to say I'm right? You could be very well, you could be right. But if it's, you're thinking about it and you're like in, you, you need to be in this to be successful. Um, and so that's, that's what um, we're talking about as far as being in business. Uh, there's 130 of us online right now. Could you imagine if um, we all started businesses that reflected what our passion is, what our dreams are, what we know in our heart, what we want to bring to this world? Like there's a lot, this world needs our help. And in a way, our products, our services um, can provide that need that really the need is crying out for everyone to step into their power and to do the business of their dream. Because when you're doing the business of your dream, not only are you a happier, more fulfilled person, but the goods and services you're providing are providing a service to others that really need it. Sometimes it's hard uh, to see exactly what what that good or service or goods and services is that you're delivering. Let's say, you know, you're, I'll just use that, the knitting example. You, you love to knit and you think you're gonna make a, a mitten and scarf business. But through this process, you're like, oh, I am a distributor of organic locally sourced wool and I have this relationship with some local sheep farmers and that really, I love that, you know? So there is this path that you can go on that may not be exactly, you know, what you're thinking right now, I'm gonna start a farm. Oh, well actually I'm gonna make infused honey. It's different, but it's related, you know, but it's still fulfilling that, that um, your, your core values of what you want to bring into the world. So Robert, um, I just started sharing our syllabus. So if you want to go over the syllabus for the next six weeks to kind of give people a pretty good idea of what we're going to be discussing. And um, that way for those who can kind of like to plan ahead, they can, they can start doing so if they choose to. Yeah, cool. So today is it's up there. We're going to talk about goals. I'm going to give you some tools. Uh, we're going to get to know each other a little bit better. Um, and if you could just scroll down, that'd be great. 
Um, so on Tuesdays, we meet and it's more like class time, like what we're doing now. And it's not just going to be um, inspirational. It's going to be very practical as well. And then on Thursday, um, it's going to be a little bit more interactive. We're going to, um, people can volunteer to be workshop, like, hey, Ty is starting a, a healing arts uh, business, or she, she's in a healing arts business, and like there's a marketing issue, or I'm thinking about doing this, you know, opening a store, and, and we can just kind of like workshop it together, do a group think, and then other people that maybe they're not in healing arts, but they're in some other business that's also wanting to diversify and start something else or do an online thing, you know, you can transfer that knowledge and everyone else's work can become our own work as well. So um, Thursday is a little more, if we imagined everyone sitting in a big circle and sharing ideas, it's kind of gonna be what we're, we're hoping to attempt it is a large group, so we might do breakout rooms and things like that. So um, week two is um, great. My good friend, Barry Friedman, is going to be presenting. Um, man, he's, he's, he's a professional uh, coach that um, honestly, people pay him uh, tens of thousands of dollars to work with him. Um, he's, he's not, he's really good and he's super inspirational, uh, besides the fact that he's like three or four time world juggling champion has been on like Johnny Carson and, uh, open for Robin Williams and uh, Vegas. <laughs> he's got a lot of stories, I'll tell you, <laughs> but, um, he's, uh, really great at help, helping you get your mission and vision and all that stuff. Um, I'm doing the session on the business plan suck. People, sometimes people don't want to go into business because, oh, I hear you have to write a business plan. And I'm here to tell you, you don't have to write a business plan. We're not going to write a business plan. This class is not about writing a business plan. It is about planning. It is about moving forward and having a strategy and documenting that. But the traditional business plan, unless you want to go get a loan from a bank, I think it's a complete waste of time for us right now, and I'll dig into that later. Uh, Ian Price is going to talk to us about money. Um, she has a great way of um, simplifying things. And throughout this course, there are, uh, I don't know if Dolly's online, but I had a chance to talk to Dolly uh, yesterday about, and she's like, all these acronyms and business and acronyms and stuff. Like, yeah, there's mission and vision and and uh, all these things, but really all I want you to be able to do is to talk about your business that people can understand and get excited about. And just like money, you need, it's, it is, there is a language around money. And there is um, really bad habits that people have, that entrepreneurs have, like not paying yourself. Um, that's a really bad habit. <laughs> so uh, that's gonna be uh, about money. Integrated marketing plan is really focused on marketing and storytelling and um, really uh, not trying to do too many things and be laser focused on your marketing. Someone mentioned about setting price as one of their goals. Um, that's a big one, uh, knowing what you're selling. Some people really don't understand what they're selling and they don't know the value of it. So we're going to dig into that. Uh, Panda Morgan with the SBDC is going to uh, talk to us about entity selection, whether it's a sole proprietor or LLC. And really, that's just about how much liability you're going to have. If you're uh, climbing up on ladders all day long and uh, driving people's expensive cars, you're probably going to you know, need to protect yourself in one way. And if you're building websites, you might need to protect yourself in a different way. Um, and then um, because we're very action-based, we're uh, going to get like personalized action plans. So when the class is over, you're gonna have a clear idea of the steps you need to take to keep this train rolling. Um, you may be in business by the end of the course, but there's still a lot more work to do. It's not you can just sit back and go, all right, that was cool. Now I'm in business, lots of money flowing, you know. <laughs> you gotta keep it up and there's uh, lots of planning to do. Um, and then uh, we haven't really talked about this. Thank you, Nicole. Um, we haven't really talked about this um, 
Nicole and I haven't really talked about this, but I'm totally open to some type of celebration. I love and you know, at the end we could add something on, whether it's a virtual thing or I just love to just celebrate our success together and uh, really acknowledge, um, you know, people showing up and uh, the certificate and um, it is challenging online. Uh, I'd love to be able to get together with everybody at the Plaza, Plaza Resource Center, but a lot can happen in six weeks. Who knows what the world's gonna look like, so. You never know. Hey, we, we may have to come April, May, or even June, call everybody in and have a, a big party for all the businesses that you guys launched through our program. You never know. We may surprise you. Yeah. And I'll tell you what is the news eats it up. Hey, we just launched 80 new businesses. Here's 80 websites. Here's their one sentence description. And then all of a sudden we're in, you know, the local paper. I mean, half of you are here because of the news guys. So it's a way, like we have some power together. Like, yeah, there's an economic catastrophe going on. Look at, we're, we bootstrapped it and we're making this stuff happen. And um, that's good news. <laughs> that's news worthy. <laughs> so we can ride that wave too, to help uh, further launch your business. Um, all right. I try, I'm gonna try not to just talk at you so much. So let's, let's, let's get a little chat thing going. Um, and just everyone try to chat up what kind of business you're, you're, um, you're starting, just to give us an idea. It can be short and I'll give you a second to do that. Hi, I'm sorry. Can you repeat yeah. that? I was, no problem. I was putting on my. Yeah, just uh, Tanisha, just put. Um, I am starting a, you know, fill in the blank. Beauty supply store, roofing company, art business, gardening, interior exterior design, quilting, film production, photography, bakery. Uh, some type of online business, tractor, eco-sensitive tractor work, um, a deli. Man, this is awesome. Party rental, bath and body, auto parts, wellness. Oh, houseplant store, I love that. Uh, cultural gift shop, yes. So cool. Uh, Samuel, what kind of dealership? I'm curious, a car dealership. Life coaching, influencer. Wow, just so many, keep them coming, keep on typing. This is really, this is really amazing. Thank you. Um, I have a question. Sure, uh, Faith, is that you? Yeah. Um, well, um, so I don't see everybody's chat. I just, mine says privately. It's going to, okay, I thank you for that, Faith. So it's, it's going to the host, there's three hosts, it's me, uh, Nicole, and Michelle, who, uh, Michelle is just in the background, and maybe you could uh, say hi if you want, Michelle. Um, she is with the Placer uh, Research. Hello. <laughs> Thank you for um, helping out here. Okay. <laughs> um, so with this many people, it's, it's really um, distracting if there's that much chat and, um, Quite honestly, uh, we're sensitive to um, Zoom bombing, if, if, you've, uh, if you know that expression. Uh, we want to make sure it stays clean and, and positive. So um, we are looking and we are, um, we hope to respond to as much as possible. Oftentimes we'll get the same question, like there was that question about like, LLC. Well, there might be the same multiple mm -hmm. people asking that question, so we can address that as the, the group. Um, so um, the, the activity has slowed down. So thank you for that. While your fingers are um, warmed up, um, 
There is, and this is going to take us in the back end a little time to do that. Oh, a notary. Um, cool. Um, is on Thursday and is a part of the overall support network. What we'd like to do is pair people up to have a like accountability buddy in the class. And we, this is going to be randomly assigned, uh, but we don't want to share your information with someone else in the class unless you give us permission to do so. And so to be very specific, what I'm asking is if you were to put in chat, just, we could just keep it, uh, and, and I, uh, Nicole, maybe you could help me remember that, you know, we're about 35 minutes into the class when I ask this question. So we can align the chat with this. But just a simple yes or no, don't do it yet. Uh, a simple yes or no, uh, next, you know, in chat. Yes, meaning we are allowed to share your information with one randomly selected other person in the class will connect you to. And so let's say you, you missed something or you wanted clarification, you couldn't get a hold of me or Nicole or for whatever reason you wanted to I don't know, just have an accountability partner, a partner, a fellow classmate to um, help you along this path, put a yes in. And if you just don't want to, uh, please put no and just go ahead and do that now. Thank you. I have a question real quick. Yeah. Um, I'm not being able to send my chat answers to you, so I'm going to close you down here and get on my iPad. Is that okay if I step away for a moment? Uh, yeah. I haven't figured out my tools in the back end of my uh, laptop. Okay, I'll be uh, right back. I'll be okay. right back. Okay. Thank you. Also, I would just love to ask if we can ask when we say yes, that it remain confidential with the person it's being shared. Thank you for that clarification. I guess the, the cat is already out of the bag a little bit with people saying yes, but retroactively, I would really hope that everyone agrees to that level of um, privacy. Yeah. Thank you, Mary. Okay, uh, keep it rolling. And um, I am gonna do a little, um, maybe I'm going to, a screen sharing in a second. I do have, um, I'm sorry, a little, <coughs> thumbs right now, but I'd like to I made a little bit of a everyone can see that I'm assuming that's thumbs up. Uh, okay, so it's a little bit of a slideshow. Um, but I won't I'm not too hung up on slideshows. So uh, we already did the whole dream big thing. Uh, uh, but maybe I'll dive into that a little bit more. We're going to talk about minimum viable product, smart goals, uh, SWOT analysis, uh, and some uh, additional resources, and that should round out the class. So I do want to pause and just um, really communicate that although things are wackadoodle right now, eh, that it's creating a lot of new opportunities. So um, you know, some people say, well, a crazy time to start a business. It's like a great time to start a business uh, because it's changed. Things are changing so rapidly. There's a lot of new needs um, and it's a really unique moment in time. Uh, one of the examples I like to use is the restaurants in uh, like in the downtowns and stuff like that. Um, up here in Nevada City, it's a little colder than in the valley down there, but you know, people were dining in the street. And uh, in my area, they've, they've allowed it to go, I don't know, it's just continuing once we get out of this purple to continue outdoor dining. And imagine 
like the fanciest restaurant, your, you know, your go-to restaurant for your anniversary or your birthday or whatever, the fancy place, that you would get your family together in winter and sit outside under heaters uh, with down jackets on to have a celebration. You know, six months ago, you'd be like, no way. But now people are like, yeah, I'll do that. Sure. You know, that's a new way of, it's like people's mind have changed. I'm not saying whether that's good or bad or whatever. I'm just, the fact is that what people are willing to accept or the way things, uh, you know, I'd never do that now that they're doing it. So um, there's good and bad, but there's also a lot of opportunity. Uh, one thing that drives me crazy is like, the, you know, wait till things get back to normal. And uh, really, I don't think we can afford to wait. Like now is the time. This is the time. Uh, what is, it's not gonna go back to whatever it was. It's we're moving forward. And so if you have that forward thinking mindset, you're gonna be a lot better off than I'm gonna wait until this and then it'll be just like how it was. I don't think so. So um, it's a great time to reinvent yourself. And so when I say dream big, what I'm really talking about is not just uh, I want to have a, you know, a store that is uh, known throughout California as the leading store for, you know, my product or my product category. Um, it's more than that. When you're dreaming big, it's what do I want my life to look like? How do I want to live my life? How much money do I want to make? What would be... Um, you know, hopefully some of you are, are already in that spot where you're, you're loving every aspect of your life and you're living the dream. But if there's some uh, room for improvement, you know, what is that? What is, what do you want from your life? And then you take your business and how does the business support that? Um, yes, you could, you know, make a lot of money selling uh, this product because, you know, I got a line on a discount supplier and I can triple my profits and I'm going to make a whole bunch of money. And yeah, you could make money doing that, but that's not really dreaming big if it's not enabling your lifestyle. So they go hand in hand. So now is a great time. You probably have spent the last, what, eight months thinking about uh, self-reflection, but now, like, how can you apply that to your business and then hopefully merge those things and uh, everything will be unicorns and rainbows. So um, I want to commend everybody for being here. You're exploring new ideas. Um, it's, you know, what your ideas now might not be what you end up with at the end of this course, but the openness is really so important right now. And as we go through, we're going to narrow your focus down. So let's start with uh, a SWOT analysis. And uh, I'm going to have a little video we'll play, like a little three-minute video. This term may be new to some of you and other people. It may not be. Uh, I'm going to maybe replicate, duplicate some of the things that are said in the video, but hearing it multiple, multiple times might help. So this is a good way of looking at uh, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. So strength, um, I'm a, a great salesperson. Uh, I have um, uh, a solid product and I, you know, have a, a free storefront and um, I have a, a a lot of experience here. Uh, weakness is um, it's expensive and uh, you know this the, uh, limited supply or the tariffs are killing me or something like that. Um, and the strengths um, are a lot to do with what you have and it's an internal strength. 
your weaknesses might be internal, but the opportunities and threats are sometimes looked at as external. Where there's huge growth in, you know, in March, if you started a face mask business, there would be a lot of opportunity to have that business. And then the threats might be uh, Walmart is uh, giving free masks to uh, everybody. Um, that might be a threat or the, the health department is saying, you know, home manufactured masks aren't legal or something like that. So um, that's a SWOT analysis. You can do this with your, um, your own life and your own life analysis. And you can also apply this to your business. Um, and so I'm trying, when I show videos, I try to keep them fairly short and I'm gonna just reserve the right to stop them if I just feel like they're too boring or I'm losing you on it. So I'm gonna try this and we're gonna see how it We goes. have a, a quick question, sorry to interrupt you, Robert. We have a quick question in the chat regarding um, recording of this class. So each of the classes will be recorded and a link will be sent to you in case you missed something or wanted to go back and, and re-listen. Cool. And then you'll just get notified with a link um, soon. Okay. Every organization needs a clear strategy in place for growing its business. And every person needs career focus and direction. But how do you know where to start? This is where SWOT analysis comes in useful. SWOT stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats. By analysing these four areas of your business or career, you'll be able to cut through the noise and focus on what really matters. You can use SWOT analysis to identify a niche in the market or to help you develop your career. When you understand your strengths and weaknesses, you can exploit the most relevant opportunities and manage threats that may otherwise have surprised you. To start your SWOT analysis, you'll need a piece of paper, or you can print off the free worksheet at mindtools.com. Give yourself time to consider each of the four areas in depth and try to be as realistic and rigorous as you can. Starting with strengths, ask yourself some key questions. What advantages do you or your organisation have? What do you do better than anyone else? What do people in your market see as your strengths? Moving on to weaknesses. Ask yourself what could you improve? What should you avoid? What factors lose you sales? What do outsiders see as your weaknesses? Next, you'll want to consider where your best opportunities lie. What interesting trends are you aware of? What advantages might arise from changes in technology, government policy, social patterns and the like? And this is really important. What options do your strengths open up for you? Finally, threats. Ask yourself what obstacles you or your organisation face. What is your competition doing that you should be worried about? Do you have bad debt or cash flow problems? And what threats do your weaknesses expose you to? When you're making your lists, be precise and prioritise. So the most important points are at the top. You'll find that your strengths and weaknesses are often internal, while opportunities and threats often relate to external factors. This is why SWOT analysis is often called internal-external analysis. When you've finished, you'll have made a good start on creating an effective strategy for success, and you'll have a better understanding of how you can move up the career ladder. For more information about SWOT analysis, see the article that accompanies this video. Okay. 
Um, so in the chat, I did upload a, a mind tools, but I'm not sure if you logged on before I, I mean, after I posted that. So uh, we'll be sure to get that to you. Mind tools is a good website and there's like a little, I mean, you can just write a, a four squares on a piece of paper is fine, but uh, there is a, a kind of a form that's nice from mind tools. Um, so if anyone is um, willing to unmike themselves, um, and I'd like to just kind of illustrate a point, do something a little bit on the, uh, on the fly. Anyone willing to step up, open up? I can. Okay, Paul, uh, real quickly, thank you very much. Um, what, what is your, uh, what's your business? I like to start a psychotherapy uh, private practice in Lincoln. Okay, and um, <clears throat> I'm in the SWOT analysis, did you come up with any threat? The right threats now? I would see would be um, other therapists, private practice, um, agencies that provide psychotherapy. Um, well, obviously the pandemic and uh, the reluctance of people to actually come to the office for therapy. Okay, so what I'm hearing is there's competition and uh, psychotherapy is traditionally an in-person, lie on the couch kind of situation. Essentially, yes. Yeah, okay. So one of the cool things about the threats is it's like, you know, turn that frown upside down and make it a smile, is oftentimes when you're looking at your business and you see something as a threat, actually that's where the opportunity is. If you don't shy away from the threat, but you turn and face it head on, then oftentimes uh, that's a really winning formula. Because it, like I said earlier, that, uh, Strengths and weaknesses are internal, and the uh, opportunities and threats are kind of external. Um, the pandemic, like, what can you do about that? Competition, what can you do about that? Like, you're not going to... Well, I picked Lincoln because, although there are some <laughs> other therapists there, it's that one city that really doesn't have many master's level therapists. And although there's some agencies there, they're not they could be referral sources. Yeah, right. So there, there's an example of uh, a threat turned into an opportunity. And, and like the obvious one is offer your services online. I mean, I want to do that. Yeah. You don't want to do that, are you? I, I do want to do that, yeah. Yeah. Actually have a room with lighting to actually do telehealth. Uh, things like that, not only for myself, but I also want to bring in other therapists and, and start a group practice. So it's not just me. Uh, yeah. So uh, Samuel, yes. Um, so if you look at your threats, it's not only motivation for improvement, but in that threat, like earlier, I said something about, oh, you, if it was last March and you're like, I'm going to, or last February, and you're like, I see the pandemic coming, I'm going to make face masks. And then there's, oh, but my business might fail because I'm not like, the government came out with a, a health regulation that individuals can't sell masks or something like that. You can say, well, I'm gonna be the only regional certified local mask maker that uses all locally sourced material and all locally sourced labor. Like I would spend five, 10 bucks extra for a mask that I know is made locally, that supports the local economy. So there's a threat and then you can turn it around to create an opportunity for yourself. And that's the point I'm trying to make. So uh, anyone else want to go? And thank you for, for stepping up by. Uh, oh, Tanisha, you want to go? Okay, okay. My threat, um, because I've had several stores inside malls and because of me being inside a mall, I had to price my products 
in a category to where I can pay for the overhead and employees and et cetera. But my threats was when you go to Walgreens and you can get two candles for $20 and my candles is $15.99, my pillars, because they're handmade and the labor and et cetera. So I found my threats being the Walmarts, the Walgreens and any other place, the dollar stores. Okay. I'm going to um, shoot from the hip here. Um, you're not going to beat them on price. There's no way you're beating them on price. It's just not going to happen. But what you can <clears throat> do is um, know your customers and know them well. Um, so let's say, for example, you're not, you're not selling candles. You're selling a romantic stay-at-home date night package that includes a Billie Holiday CD. It includes a candle, a grandma's recipe for you know deviled food cake or something like that. And it's a package deal. And you put it together. And again, you can search, you know, like. Romantic date, Sacramento. And you could search engine optimize for that. You can take, you do Facebook ads for that. And although your profit margin per candle may be reduced, your overall sale volume could be, you know, you were selling the candle for 15 bucks, but now, you know, the dude that's like, I don't know what to you know, do for my first anniversary and we're staying at home and I want to do something special and boom, you come up in their feed and it's just like curbside pickup, romantic da da da, 75 bucks, yup, sold. And that Walmart's not doing that. And you with your authenticity, with your um, this is handmade, this is locally sourced, uh, you know, even if your ad was like, hey guys, want a perfect romantic stay-at-home date? You got them, you know? So you really have to know your audience, package it, make it appealing to them. And what you're doing is you're not selling a candle. You're absolutely not selling a candle. You're selling an experience. You're solving a problem. And you're reaching out specifically to your audience and your customer. And you're providing an easy solution for them. And that's how you're going to be successful. And Walmart can't compete with that. How does that work? How does that sound? Um, you're right, because uh, Valentine's Day, you're right. That's what you need to do. You need to sell that package, you know. Um, and I hate to say it, guys, but you guys are the easiest <laughs> in doing Valentine's <laughs> Day. <laughs> but no, he's, he's right. But yeah, I did find that when I did my business plan, I did put that in consideration. And uh, what I tried to do was work on my strength, which was the customer service. As you said, Walmart, you can't go in Walmart and get one-on-one -on -one customer service and that conversation and the personalization. So definitely you're, you're right about that. And I have to keep that in mind. It's the yeah. packaging and how you present it. Right. And that's why, you know, start collecting email addresses, start um, building your audiences on whatever social media platform, um, whatever one you want, like F Facebook, you can upload like a hundred email addresses or you know, a minimum like a hundred of your like your best customers. And then they will create a profile based on those hundred people. And then when you advertise 
You say, I want more people like this because you know those are winning customers. And then you pay 10 bucks for an ad and you, you have a little, hopefully you have a little success. And when you start thinking about it in that, that's a, just the candles is a perfect example. You have Valentine's Day and, what, and then you have, you know, anniversaries kind of go all year round, but then there's the, you know, the, the holidays, the birthday, the, you know, there's all year long, you can repackage your package to target your audience. And pretty much any business you're in, I mean, uh, if you're like a psychoanalyst or something like that, that's, you're not gonna <laughs> send, send your sweetheart to the psychoanalyst. <laughs> Honey, I got you a present. <laughs> you need some therapy. I'm not sure that would work too well, but. <laughs> You can think of some other creative way to, to, to uh, reach out and find your audience. Um, <laughs> someone, someone changed their mind and wants to sell candles now. Uh, okay, uh, maybe we have time just for one quickie. Anyone? Type it in or open your mic. Um, I'll go. Hi, this is Janine. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Okay, whoever spoke first, I didn't see who that was. Oh, it, it's okay. Um, she can go. <laughs> all right, just real quick. Um, this is Janine. Hi, Janine. Um, I feel like I have a hi. I feel like I have a weakness um, with my with my real estate staging because um, every single time I go to see a realtor, the first thing they ask me is, "Do you have furniture?" <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm really struggling. It's expensive to get, you know, all your furniture and get a place to put it and all that. So that kind of scares me to where I, I just, I just stop. Um, I've told them before that I can do consultations and, you know, I can use their furniture, no problem. But they always ask me, do you have furniture? And I'm like, ah. So I just kind of, I just don't know what to do. I mean, I know it's all about money and going out and to buy it, but there is no money. So okay, I that's hear you. my question. That is a, a, a possible weakness. And again, although it's not a threat, I'm going to flip that around okay. and turn it into an opportunity. Um, and, you know, it may be silly for you to own you know, colonial furniture and modern furniture and all the right. different furniture to match the house. <clears throat> um, but you know what? The used furniture store or the high-end uh, consignment furniture store yeah. has yeah. loads of that, as well as artists that are incredible artists that have a garage full of paintings that they can't sell. <laughs> right. Melissa, right. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, I actually know someone that does that in Tahoe at the, the multi-million dollar houses. Their artwork is hanging in the houses. They're staged. And you know what? When people are coming up to Tahoe and they're buying their fourth vacation house and they all <laughs> love that painting, guess what? It's for sale. Right. So furniture right. stores and the artists now... I mean, it's not a huge volume of uh, eyeballs on it with traffic, but with COVID, they have less traffic in their stores. There's a, a, a chance that you could convert that sale. So, hey, used furniture store, here's this deal. Let's see how it goes. Let's try it for three months. Uh, you're right. responsible for, um, you're responsible for um, shipping getting the furniture there and back, you get, right. all, you get all of the sales. You get all the sales price. And then right. you go to your clients that are paying you to stage their house and say, oh, if you provide your own furniture, you know, my fee is this, you have to provide your own furniture. If you'd like me to make arrangements to have furniture there, there's a nominal you know, $400 upcharge. And that covers right. your cost of managing and staging your free furniture that gets delivered to the place. That is cool. Right. right. 
That's so a great idea. Wow. This is the power yeah. of the SWOT analysis and spending time and digging into it and seeing what comes out of it because that's where the gold is. That's where your business, the gold is, I'm telling you. Right. So, um, Thank you. Okay, Janine, let's, let's move on. I see that there are some chats and we, we're not going to have time to get to all of that. Um, I, I always see um, presenters when they switch and start, uh, screen sharing and it's always just so seamless and I get jealous and I kind of fumble my way through. Okay, we're moving on to SMART goals. Uh, this is, I'm gonna be hammering on this throughout the class. It's another um, tool that I want you to become familiar with, a SMART goal. And yes, we have an acronym. Uh, it's specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time bound. So when you make a goal like this, what's really important is like, I'm gonna do this by this time. And then let's say I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna do all the homework that Robert assigned by tomorrow at five. Well, tomorrow at five, you can say, did I do it or not? It's a lot different than, um, I really wanna learn a new language. I'm gonna learn a new language. So what does that mean? <laughs> what, what's the threshold of knowing that language? Is it like, you know, you know how to say like, where's the closest bus stop? That's not really knowing the language. So it's hard to measure. By when are you gonna learn the, the um, language? So uh, I do have another um, stunning video. We're gonna try to share that. See what happens here. Um, and this is fairly, some of your kids that are in a home schooled. Uh, back. So we've learned that it's important to keep working through your frustrations by using the right learning strategies. The more you work through your frustration, the more your brain grows, right? But it can be difficult to work through that frustration without a clear direction. That's why it's important to make SMART goals. It's an acronym. goes like this. Specific, measurable, actionable, realistic, timely. Because, look, you can wish all you want and say, one day I'm going to go to the moon. And you can want that like your life depended on it. But a wish is not a goal. An example of a moon plan that consists of SMART goals would go something like this. <clears throat> In 20 years, I will have studied enough physics and chemistry, flown jet planes in the Air Force, worked out four times a week, and gotten a job as an astronaut for NASA. And this will enable me to fly a spacecraft to the moon and put my feet on it for science reasons. Specific. Put your feet on the moon. Measurable. Are your feet touching the surface of the moon? Actionable. It is actionable, that is to say doable, to study physics and chemistry, enlist in the Air Force, and go to the gym. Realistic. It's hard, but it's not impossible to become an astronaut. Timely. Here's where more realism kicks in. You won't be able to go to the moon as an astronaut overnight. 20 years seems a little more reasonable. But let's take this back to a more sensible time scale and look at our friend Thinky Pinky. Hey, buddy. TP here is interested in pull-ups, wants to be able to lift their entire mass with just the arms, this one. But pull-ups are hard. So let's take a look at Thinky Pinky's reflection journal. <clears throat> Quote, I want to be able to do two consecutive pull-ups by the end of the year by practicing pull-ups at the gym three times per week. Why is this a smart goal? S is for specific. TP wants to work on pull-ups, and they're not interested in biking or weight training. There's one skill that Thinky Pinky wants to work on, and that's pull-ups. M is for measurable. What's the metric for TP's success? Two in a row. Two pull-ups, one right after the other. You've either done it or you haven't. Measurable. A is for actionable. Can it be broken down into individual tasks? Yeah. Going to the gym three times a week to practice feels very actionable indeed. R is for realistic. TP's not training to lift a car. Just some pull-ups. T is for timely. There's a time limit on this. Thinky Pinky wants to do this in a year's time. Altogether. That's a smart goal you got there, TP. 
With the power of persistence, smart goals, and the right kind of help, you can do anything you set your mind to. You can learn anything. Happy goal setting! Okay. Uh, so just as a little uh, preview here, um, we're going to have you do some SMART goals before our next class. And the SMART goals could be um, something small, like by next week, I will have a business Facebook page started or a business Instagram page started, or uh, I will have a domain name um, or something like that. Another SMART goal as longer term could be, I will be in business by the end of this course by coming to all the classes and doing all the homework, something of that. Uh, so um, these are not, these SMART goals are not um, to teach you how to do a SMART goal. These SMART goals are real, right? <laughs> I want you to do SMART goals that are working on you getting in business. And um, I encourage you to give it a try, whether it's, um, you know, not just all little little goals to stretch, do a stretch goal. Stretch goal is like, it's gonna take a little, uh, some, some actual effort to, to get it done. Any uh, questions about that? Hey, Robert, you said our, our uh, due date is this coming Thursday, correct? Uh, for this, um, I'd like it to be a week from tonight. That's a good clarification. Uh Okay, and, thank you. And Mary, of course, it's all right to start your class before um, your business before the end of this class. And some of you are, I'm sure, some of you are already um, in business and making money, and you're here to refine that. Oftentimes, I get like, you know, oh, yeah, um, you know, I've just kind of been doing this on the side, and I have a, you know, it's rolling just a little bit, but it's not official or they don't feel like they could quit their day job and rely on that for income. <clears throat> okay, uh, moving on. Uh, I will, there is a, a smart goal template if I could share with you. Uh, back to this. Okay, the next thing and the final like, um, practical um, tool here is something called the minimum viable product. So if you are, let's say, uh, I'm going to go back to the example of uh, starting a sushi business, that, you know, having a restaurant, a brick and mortar with a full staff, a full menu, branding, business cards, you know, all this stuff, it probably would not be that smart to just like invest your life savings and do all of that because you may be wrong and that would be a big mistake. But what you could do is do a minimum viable product, which is offer um, an in-house supper club at your home. Um, and I, I guess I would just have a caveat that would say, check with your local health uh, laws about the uh, ability to do this or you know if it's people in your pod or whatever but you could just have a few people over that are in your pod and see if they'd be willing to pay for your supplies and you would cook this fabulous sushi dinner because you want to get their feedback on the sauce the type of rice and a few other things but it's really just the very slim down minimum thing you would need to be consider yourself in business. It could be one product. 
And if you recognize that that product is not what you're doing to launch your business to make a million dollars, you're using that product to test customer feedback so you can make adjustments. So as when you have enough feedback and you've mod made enough modifications that you know, like everyone that I serve this sushi dish with this sauce, they can't, you know, they can't stand themselves. They just need more and they just, you know, I'll pay you anything. And now, you know, that's, that's the perfect recipe. You know, people have said, yes, I'll pay between 20 and $25 for this. And you know, that's, that's great. And you can go out with that. But until then, you're just experimenting and making lots of mistakes. I encourage you to make mistakes. Make a ton of mistakes. Make sure that they're small mistakes, not big mistakes. You're in the stage right now where you're making small mistakes. Uh, so I do have, oh yeah. Um, and so another part of the minimum viable product is to get out of the building. A lot of times people are like, and then I'm gonna do this, and then I'm gonna do that, and then I'm gonna do this, and then I'm gonna add this, and then I, here's my pricing, and this is what I'm gonna offer, and this is the packaging, and I'm gonna offer it in small, medium, and large, and it's gonna be this, this, and that. And then they make up all this stuff. And then they make the business and no one buys it. But instead, in this uh, experimentation phase, you could, take your knitted scarf, you could take your sushi, you could take your um, healing arts home kit, you could take whatever it is you're thinking about uh, selling, offering, and um, say to a friend or a friend of a friend, hey, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm starting a business in the healing arts uh, field, and would you be willing to answer a few questions? Sure, I'd love to answer a few questions. Hey, like, um, uh, I'm thinking about offering this, this, and this. What do you think you would use it for? And then just shut up and let listen to them. And it's amazing what people will say. Oh, when I first heard that, I thought you were going to tell me this because my kid really likes that, this and that, and this and that. And they just start pouring out all these ideas about, and by the way, I wasn't telling you to shut up. Well, I kind of was, but I, didn't, I meant it in the nicest way. Uh, listen is what I'm trying to say, is present something and then listen. There's a, there's a, a famous uh, Silicon Valley mess up, which was uh, back in the dot-com days, which was um, they would spend all this money making prototypes of websites. We're gonna do a, like a pet food business. And they would spend with designers and make a logo <clears throat> and people would argue about like, well, should it say buy now or should it say add to cart or, uh, you know, should it be green or red or like they'd spend hours and then they'd do focus groups and on and on and on and on and on. And four months later, they'd have something and then they'd have the focus group look at it. And then only for people to say, I'm not gonna buy dog food online. I buy it down at the corner store. But what I would buy is, you know, dog leashes or something like that. And really all they needed to do was like take a piece of paper, draw a website and say like pet food and say, would you, would you buy dog food online? Oh no, you wouldn't buy dog food online. Well, what would you buy for your pet online? And you do that with 200 people. I mean, I'm, that's a large scale. I'm not suggesting you talk to 200 people. But you know, if everyone's like, I would buy my cat collar online. Oh, you know what I really need is I need tags or I need whatever. And all of a sudden your pet food business, which was going to fail, is now you know, a dog collar business with cheaper, less storage. It doesn't go bad. You know, you can order it on demand. There's a great, uh, you know, you can triple the price. It's easy to mail. Great. You know, you started in one way and you're, you're off on another thing. So that is the, the 
purpose of this part of your startup business. You're like, I want to do this business. And of course you can do this and 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 you can do this. And you know, I can do with that and then I can do this. No, like that's, you'll get there. But what's really happening in your mind, your monkey brain is like, you have an assumption and then you put an assumption on top of assumption and then an assumption on top of assumption. And then it's like this house of cards is gonna come crashing down. And so the minimum viable product is really like, what is the core essence of what you're selling or service you're providing or what you think <coughs> you want to provide? Make it easily presentable in as few of words as possible. Maybe have a visual if you, if you think that helps. It doesn't have to be a finished product. It shouldn't be a finished product because in that example of the pet food, if I did a piece of paper and just a pen and paper, people are gonna know like that's not the finished product. So they're not gonna be like, oh, I think it should be blue or I don't like that color. Or, you know, you're not gonna get that, you're, you don't need that kind of feedback right now. But what you do need the feedback is, and eh. <laughs> I'm not into that, you know, but I am into this. Or my friend did this and that was really cool. And you listen. And that's the point. So I will say that starting a business is scary. There's a lot of fear involved with that. And I understand that. It's a lot to um, go out and let's say, you know, you got laid off from a job or some, you know, everyone's lives have been turned upside down. And, you know, you, you go out and you're like coming out to your friends, like, this is what I'm doing. And it's, there can be a lot of self-doubt in that. And I understand that. But right now, you know, if you're like, hey, I'm thinking about this, what do you think? People love to tell you their opinion. And if you do it in a constructive way, it's really, really, really helpful to you and it's highly valuable and it's going to save you a ton of money and a ton of time and in the end you're going to end up with something that is a workable business so that's um minimum viable product i do have um another video but we're running out of time so uh i'll just open it up for a, a question or something if someone wants to uh type in something or on mute, you can. We will talk a little bit about business licensing. By the way, this is in a chat. And Nicole, it just reach out to Nicole and she's really good at that stuff. Anyone about minimum viable product or MVP? Karen, go ahead and unmute your mic and go ahead and speak. Okay. Hi, this is Karen. Hey. I I have what I'd like to do. I've developed a food product. It's a dessert product that you hold in your hand. And I, I believe I've done uh, what you talked about as far as the minimum viable product over the years. I have given samples out to family, friends, workplaces, donated to a product to um, rotary clubs, all without a license, mind you. So now I'm all of a sudden really nervous because I'd like to develop the product and sell it, but I don't know where to start as far as getting all my licensing and everything. But, and I've refined the crusts on some of the product and a logo, have the domain name. I mean, I'm moving forward, but um, I've had a lot of people that I don't know now who have had the product asking where they can buy it. So I feel like this is a good time for me to start. Is that what you were talking about from minimum viable product, getting feedback from all different sources and then refining the product? I feel like I'm at that point where it is. It's complete and I'm ready to go, but I don't know how to start at all as far as getting licenses and. Yeah, okay, I hear you. Um, well, first off, um, right on. I mean, it sounds like you really um, are, uh, are quite far along and you've done a very thoughtful uh, process. 
Um, obviously, there's still more work to be done on product definition. We do <clears throat> have a session on, on pricing and things like that. I imagine that's one area that you could um, get out of the building and talk to people about. Um, let, uh, food, edible things is, um, you know, a certain higher level of licensing and regulations. Um, are you familiar with the cottage food bill or the cottage food licensing? Um, I have looked at it. It, uh, I think if that's, if it's the same thing you're referring to, uh, I can do things at home, but part of my product contains a dairy product. So I can't, so I have to find a commercial kitchen somewhere or something like that. Yeah. Is that kind of what you're talking about? Yeah. Um, yeah, that's right. The dairy stuff is problematic. So, um, yeah. The, uh, Nicole, if you have any insight on this, but I, I would imagine that the, uh, somewhere in Placer County's agriculture is, uh, department is where they do that type of licensing. And uh, Nicole, do you wanna step in? And, and maybe just actually, we could take this offline because there's, there's definitely, this is time for regulation, but I would say, that your easiest way to market and easiest way to experiment with pricing is selling it online. And you may be restricted to selling it only within a, a zip code if there's, you know, based on regulation. Okay. Yeah. Anything that has to do with food is whether it's in Placer County jurisdiction or, you know, the unincorporated portion of Placer County or in city limits is all, through Placer County Environmental Health. They rate, re, excuse me, regulate everything. So um, we, I will shoot you an email or you can send me an email, Karen, and we can kind of go into a little bit more detail and I can kind of point you in, in that direction on where you need to go for any type of permits or clarification. Thank you very much, I appreciate it. Very welcome. Cool. And um, I don't know about the rest of you, but I, I'm feeling like whatever that handheld goodie is, we should have that at our, our party <laughs> if that ever happens. Gladly. <laughs> cool. Uh, okay, we're, we're winding this down. I'm a really big uh, uh, proponent of show up on time, and I really want to end on time to respect everyone's time. Um, but I will do an open mic uh, and hang out for a little bit after class. So uh, here's a little motivational thing. Right now is the time to do what you're doing. You're at the right place, the right time. And it's not about the candle. It's about the experience. It's about that date night. It's about fulfilling the need. It's not about the candle. Provide your customers with the transformational experience and you're going to win. It's not about that widget you're selling. Or it's not about, you know, I have a window cleaning service. It's I'm going to bring you happiness because you can see you're closer to nature. That's what you're selling. You're not selling window cleaning. Um, this is a homework assignment. Um, everyone has their different business, their business niche. Uh, I would like you to go find three businesses that are somewhat similar to what you're doing on the web. And uh, this is kind of in alignment with your big dream and like, whoa, that website is awesome. That business is awesome. Uh, they're not exactly what I'm thinking about doing, but they're pretty darn close. And I see, you know, their pricing and they got this form is slick and I like it. Uh, it's really good. Everyone borrows from everybody on the web. You know, you're probably pretty darn original, but other people have done your business uh, and find them. If it's something very specific, like let's say it's window washing, you may not want to look at window washing in Rockland. You may want to look at window washing in Ashland, just out of respect of your local um, colleagues in the same business. Um, I'm not suggesting you steal from people, but everyone borrows ideas and is inspired by other websites. So take a look at three different ones it's going to help you get some great ideas. Uh, this is just a really minor thing. Everyone, I'm sure, has a Google account. 
um, just for your own safety and protection, you're going to be making business cards or publishing your, your phone number on the web. Google Voice is awesome. You get your own Google phone number. You can route it to your cell phone. It transcribes your voicemail. <clears throat> you can keep your private number private. Keep your private number private. Google Voice is free. It's a great tool. You can send your voicemails to your email. It's Google. It's a good service. Do it. Uh, that's just a little, a little thing that I'm, I'm a big proponent of. And these are all tools that you're going to put in your toolbox. Um, quick tips, get help when you need it. Uh, it's not just this group and all the resources we've talked about. It's friends, family. Um, experiment, make mistakes, be kind to yourself. You're, you're in uncharted territory. You're going to make mistakes. We all have enough pressure. You're doing the best you can. You know, you know you're working hard. Um, the whole I should have, you're trying, if you try to force it, um, you know, some good might come of it. But um, just, yeah, it, it can be maddening starting that business. So be sure to do some self care. This is the next steps um, to get the one to one business consulting. Like I'm a consultant, a one to one business consultant. There's all these different business consultants. You sign up, you signed up for this class, but there's a link here. And I'm going to send this PDF out, or Nicole will send this PDF about to you with this link, but it's Sierra SBDC.com. There's an apply now button. You go to the site, apply now, fill the form out. You will get contacted by some me or someone like me. Hey, you know, what's Kyle? What, what can I help you with? What do you want to do? Oh, I want help in marketing. I want help in this or that. Um, you'll get assigned to someone that you can work for free up to eight hours or more one-to-one -one business consulting with them. Do it. Um, it is helpful. If you are just starting a business, one of the ways that the SBDC gets funding is by helping start new businesses. So, you know, we get more brownie points if you're a new business. Uh, so be sure to check that box if you are something called pre-venture. Create three SMART goals. Find those... Uh, uh, websites that you like, get out of the building, start talking about it and listen, listen to people. Just say, this is my business. What do you think? Ask probing questions and uh, listen and take notes um, and come up with your minimum viable product. What is the absolute streamlined product or service I'm going to do at launch, it might change by the end of this class, but at least you'll have some type of um, benchmark, something to work from. It's 1.31, I'm a minute over. So I'm gonna just officially uh, close this out and thank everybody. This is super awesome. I'm just blown away by the turnout. And um, we can go um, a little crazy and unmute ourselves. You can just say hi, bye. Uh, stick around for a question or two and thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.